What's up, Doombots? Uh, ISO 8s for the Black Order. These are part of the uh, the quick series I'm doing where I just kind of look over teams, give you the ISO 8s I use, and uh, other options you can have based on where you are in the game. We're going to start with the Black Order because, let's face it, I think it's the team that everyone talks about the most. Now, obviously, this is not cutting-edge new information. This is proven information that uh, people have been using uh, over time. You'll find a lot of people having conversations about why, when, and how to use these abilities. Uh, this is what I use. In general, when you look at Thanos, you have to look at his kit when you decide what ISO 8 to put on them. Quick look at Thanos' base kit. His primary attack or his basic attack is just a one target attack. Brutal Assault is again a single target attack. Uh, Energy Bomb attacks everybody. And uh, Titan Eternal it, it's a little bit less relevant as far as uh, when what ISOs he has. In general, if you're just using Thanos outside of the Black Order, uh, just damage is a big increase. It increases the amount he heals himself through Energy Bomb, and it uh, pushes the Power Punch and the Brutal Assault up a little bit more. People can justify Fortifier, as with anybody, if you're noticing that your Thanos unempowered is dying a little too quickly for most. Uh, in general, the unempowered uh, Thanos, the regular Thanos, works best with healer ISO 8. And the reason why is because Thanos' health pool is ungodly insane. And uh, obviously I have a 6 red 7 star Thanos. He's very strong. Uh, the scale is what's relevant to the fight. So obviously the stronger your Thanos is, the more health he has. But he has... Uh, comparatively one of the highest health pools in the game if you look at any other character with similar investment at any stage of the investment line. His base damage is pretty reasonable. He doesn't have a great amount of crit. Uh, his speed is slow, which is a downside, but since his health pool is so amazing, if I take a quick look, this is 400,000 health, uh, on turn his mini heal is for 20,000, or his minor re uh, regeneration. His 5% heal that he gets at level 3 healer is also for 20,000. So even though it's not happening a lot, it is a big heal for most characters when it comes out. Uh, when you go into Empowered, that's where you can start getting a little bit cuter with the abilities. Infinity Blast hits 3 people. Time Shift targets everybody, flips positive effects. So it, it hits all of the opponents. Now it can't crit which actually gives a little bit of value to Skirmisher um, on both sides. Skirmisher, obviously, it's fine on Thanos proper, but on Thanos uh, empowered, you get a little bit more value out of a Skirmisher on Thanos because he's still putting at least one vulnerability based on whoever the target is when he pushes his special button. Celestial Barrage, again, same thing. Skirmisher works, but because it hits everybody, and then it hits them two additional times, the odds of you critting is astronomically high. You're hitting 15 total times. You have a, as you saw, 30% crit chance. Odds are you're critting at least, what is that, three, four times, based on how the math works out. So, it's relatively lucky uh, for you to have it on him and make the most out of it. Uh... And then, of course, you have ultimate power. This doesn't really make too much of a difference uh, as far as, you know, what abilities you're putting on. Him. So, for me, I use Raider because most of the time my Thanos is empowered. When he's not, um, or if you're using him for, like, raids or something, uh, Healer, Skirmisher are all viable options for Thanos. Uh, and he was pretty much the most difficult one. He's the only one that has different modes. Everybody else kind of falls into their own category. So Ebony Maw, for example, I have him set as a skirmisher uh, for a very simple reason. Every single action Ebony Maw takes has a target. Um, and none of his attacks do actual damage for the most part. Uh, and none of his attacks uh, re heal actually with like a stat. So Needle Storm is a single target attack that attacks two extra times, um, up to three extra times with tier fours, applies bleed, yada yada yada. Now this attack doesn't actually do much damage, so increasing his damage stat, even at tier four, is not going to go absolutely crazy. 
you're not gonna he's, he's not gonna become the strongest attack he has but since it's a multi-attack uh skirmisher will either place a buff or remove a buff whenever he does it now he's not doing this too often so it's not that relevant um as far as you can increase the damage with a a striker it's not going to make a much of a noticeable attack because this is just his basic but it's okay uh, and of course raider is pretty irrelevant because critting on very low damage just to put the stack on doesn't make too much of a difference and it's the only attack he has that's even capable of critting moving to insidious whisper uh so it does a lot of stuff for you and all allies the key here is the apply offense down to two turns to all enemies. Now, this clearly doesn't do damage, so any of the damage-based stats are relevant. Uh, it doesn't heal, so there's no reason to put healer for this ability. It doesn't do much. But since it does fall under the, if I hit the button and have skirmisher on, it'll put a vulnerable target rule, you can benefit from this by choosing the target before you use it and guaranteeing a vulnerable proc on that character or if they already have vulnerable guaranteeing to clear at least one buff on them uh, very relevant as far as as abilities are concerned so another tick in the side of skirmisher moving to force transfusion this is where people get a little bit confused none of ebony maw's abilities none of this says heal it says steel hell it says redistribute health, but none of it heals. Because of that, combined with the fact that Ebony Maw's health is not particularly insane, uh, and again, maybe with higher red stars it gets crazier, but comparing it to stronger or healthier characters, not quite there. Uh, the heal itself isn't relevant. But another situation where Striker is amazing is because Force Transfusion will allow this character to put a buff or a vulnerable on somebody or clear a vulnerable if they have skirmisher again this attack cannot crit so as far as the abilities are concerned skirmisher uh improves the quality of every single one of his abilities where some might get slightly better like the basic might be slightly better with crit but ultimately skirmisher just is better uh moving to envoy of thanos this doesn't actually do anything uh, on death of an enemy gain charge apply immunity barrier all allies if charged ability block blah 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 resistance so nothing in his passive leads to making a stronger uh, pick on anything you know like if he is passive healed people you can make a better argument for healer but as the fact that he is a healer who doesn't technically heal anybody kind of like scarlet witch uh healer iso 8 while good is not optimal on him for that it's pretty much skirmisher corvus glaive i've had this conversation with many people if you'd like to put raider on him because he crits a lot and you want him to crit a lot a little bit more often there's absolutely no problem with that again as an independent character putting more crit on corvus would make him do more damage uh, alone on the team however or more specifically when paired with proxima he gets a ton of value from being striker class now very simple reasons why first the only attack he has that hits multiple people is grim glaive it's a five energy attack you could do it once very unlikely it's going to happen uh too many times so it's okay it's a good attack uh, given the opportunity to crit it would be nice but you don't often have a, a perfect choice of who to crit uh, and it, it does do a pretty decent chunk of damage, and he does have a pretty decent damage stat. So adding 5% damage to his stat, or, or adding an extra attack to his ability, is pretty reasonable, considering he does do pretty decent amounts of damage. So that's uh, one benefit to Striker when looking at this ability. The other abilities, obviously crit is relevant, but like I said, he has a pretty decent base crit chance of 10 all of his attacks that you would pay attention to critting right here while in stealth he goes to 50 percent do you know what i mean like when he's in stealth he has a 50 percent crit chance which if you were to put isos in him it would go to maybe 70 percent 
after, you know, tier 3, 75%. Reasonable, but not really what his value comes in. So I don't regret putting in. I don't think you should regret having Raider on him. But I don't think just because it says crit, lean into crit on his kit makes sense because he's more of a team player. And uh, when you look at the benefit of Shadow uh, Slash or his basic, especially when paired with Proxima, the increased damage overall is just going to be worth more uh, on his assists and everything else than the chance of him potentially critting on the assists. So for this, I'm a big fan of uh, Striker on him. Uh, I don't really want to go into Healer or Fortifier. They don't do much. There is an argument for Skirmisher, but because of how Bloodletting works and it targets the most injured enemy, I don't like to do that on attacks that... Like, I'd rather the attack have a chance of killing the weakest enemy, so that's why either Raider or Striker would be good. Uh, the fact that you might want to remove a taunt from a character and he ignores that and goes and takes somebody else out, not optimal. So I don't really like Skirmisher on him. I'm pretty confident that Striker is the best. I accept Raider as a good option for him outside of that. Proxima Midnight... Uh, Proxima is another character that quite literally can have anybody. So she's among the fastest characters, but she has a very weak health pool. So healer is not great on her, not really optimal. The team also doesn't need that much sustainability, so it's not uh, imperative that she have healer. Fortifier is a good option. She is relatively squishy, especially at lower investment points. So it'll keep her alive, and if you ever fought Black Order in war, you know that a, a key strategy of beating the Black Order in war is send in Team 1 to just kill Proxima and maybe Corvus Glaive, and then in the second round it's significantly easier to beat up a non-empowered Thanos with a Cull uh, and a Maw or something like that. So you make the fight easier by killing Proxima. So there's an argument that can be made for Fortifier. Uh, I always think that abilities like Fortifier are used until your characters are strong enough to be used properly. I don't think Fortifier is usually the end goal of many characters uh, in the game, at least as of right now. So, looking at Proxima, uh, damage is always great. She's constantly hitting uh, targets, so it's meaningful. Last Light is single target. Uh, increasing the damage is great. Crit Chance, also very reasonable on her. Star Throw hits multiple targets. Raider would be a great option to guarantee vulnerabilities. Uh, Starless Strike, very similar uh, set up. The reason now I go with Skirmisher is very simple. There's an interaction between her and Corvus Glaive where if Corvus Glaive attacks a target, when she is guaranteed to call for an assist, she will put Skirmisher or Vulnerable uh, proc on the character, which will then trigger Corvus Glaive to get the extra attack in. Corvus Glaive sees, even though that character didn't have it when he started his attack, because his attack had that assist, it sees that, oh, she has a vulnerable. I'll take another hit. So it increases the amount of damage that every time Corvus Glaive hits a target, whether they had vulnerable or not, it is incredibly likely that he will take an extra attack. And if they do, her uh, assist will potentially clear a buff or uh, multiple buffs off of the target based on how high up on Skirmisher she is. So as for Skirmisher, it just makes sense with what she's doing. Constantly putting, she's also very fast, so you're always putting vulnerable on a target. Uh, works very well. Last is Cole Obsidian. Um, so there's there's a little bit of an issue with Cole. I think the hierarchy for Cole is if he's weaker and you need him to survive, then it's very relevant for you to have a um, healer is bad. So like he's got a lower health pool than like Ebony Maw in general, but. It goes up, it's scaling, it's higher, but it's very unlikely that you have a stronger call than Ebony Maw. I know it sounds crazy, it's just easier to get more stars on Ebony Maw than Cole, obviously. So, Fortifier makes sense on Cole, he's a tank. But the biggest value Cole has is in payback. In his, whenever a Thanos or Ebony Maw is hit, that enemy gets a counterattack for a decent chunk of damage. Again, Cole could use a little bit more on the damage side. So as a result of Cole needing more damage, uh, it's important that you have the most possible damage on Cole. For me, that is Striker. And now some people like Raider. 
I I cannot confirm. I don't believe Raider uh, affects passives. Uh, it might improve his chance of critting on this attack, but I know for a fact that it will not uh, put a buff or a, a debuff, a vulnerable, on the character when he does it. So, not a high priority. Uh, for me, it just seems like damage is across the board the correct choice for Cole because one, he does damage. Two, you, you want him to do extra damage every time those assists comes in. And three, getting an extra attack in with Cole, since damage is his biggest thing, is also very relevant. Uh, I believe crit has a home for it, but I don't think you can reliably count on Cole critting on his passive. And I think when you look at the rest of his abilities, uh, attack primary target and then hit them again, while crit would be good potentially for this attack, uh, it is based on, it is still a single attack, so a little bit more damage is a little better. Obsidian Guard doesn't hit anybody, so whatever. And uh, Devastating Cleave does hit multiple targets, but you're probably not using his basic too often in a fight. And when you are, um, it's usually much later if you've experienced the fight. And there might not be as many adjacent characters to the ones you're targeting. Now, there might be crit might be beneficial to that uh just overall it does feel like pure damage is is the way to go on cole assuming you can scale him up now lower level coals you might want fortifier just to keep him alive long enough uh, you might want crit just to actually sometimes have a better chance of doing damage but you're losing out on some of the vulnerable procs um that you would be getting from his passive uh, you can go a lot of ways. I just, I tend to lean on this. Uh, and that's pretty much everything as far as this team goes. Now, again, this is for the entire team itself, not for uh, using two characters as part of a comp. Uh, comment below and let me know if there's any major change you see from the team I'm using, from what you're using. Obviously, there's plenty of different options and there's plenty of different investment points you may or may not have. Uh, your Black Order might not be about 500k. You might not uh have a five star across the team whatever it is let me know and uh i would just like to see how many other people are building black orders and maybe how successful those have been anyway have a good night have a great day i've been tony skinjili and i'll catch you later